Welcome to Victory. I want to thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. Thank you for watching the program. I'm the senior pastor at Victory in Camden and Victory in El Dorado. We have campus pastors at each one of those. And we just want to thank you for being a part of our audience. Thank you for letting Victory be a part of your family and a part of your life. You know, during the service today, there will be a telephone number at the bottom of your screen. If you would take advantage of that. Let us know what's going on in your life. If God is dealing with your heart, if you're rejoicing in your heart, things that we can stand with you and pray with you about, call that number at the bottom of the screen. Let's go right into that service at Victory now. I want to give you a, a step, another step in our process of what, what scripture are we on? Psalms 91, verse, we're going to fool you. We're going to verse 2 today. Somebody get clapped. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because the secret of a wonderful life is found in Psalms 91 along with multitudes of verses throughout the Bible. But Psalms 91, it, it tells us what God wants to do. And then it tells me what I must do. And so it begins with, really, in verse 1, and everything that I'm expected to do is all found in verse 1. It simply says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's four steps that I can find that's listed in that one chapter. Four steps of me coming into a place with God where literally I become hid in the Lord. And where the rest of this chapter deals with everything from health issues to mental issues to emotional issues. And it gives the promise that you will be able to see it all end well. But all the requirements is in this verse. And so we're going to quickly look at it just quickly. Then we're going to talk about step number five. The, the store, four steps are we enter. Everybody say we enter the presence of the Lord. And I pray this morning that if you don't have a prayer life at work, that you will not stop until you get a prayer life working in your life that will work in your life daily. You can't make it without that connection. You're a believer. <laughs> you use ethyl, or, or you use high octane. You used to call it ethyl. You use high octane. Regular won't work for you anymore. Amen. And the only way it works, only way you get high octane, you've got to pull into your gas tank. So you've got to be willing to develop a prayer life. Amen. Now quit saying, I'm too busy. Amen. We're too busy not to. Amen. Amen. We have to have God. How many of you get up every week and you can't figure out how in the world you're going to do all the things you need to do that week? That's why we need to pray. <laughs> because only God can take that kind of life and cause it to be successful. So I must realize I've got to develop a prayer life. So the first thing we do, we enter. We enter with praise. Second thing we, we learn, once we begin to praise our way in, we begin to honor the Lord. It must move also to a place of worship. <laughs> because not only do you thank, you thank God for what God has done, but you honor Him for who He is. Yeah. See, you may have never need a healing, but you better honor Him that He's your healer, because one day you will need a healing. <laughs> you may have never needed miraculous provision, but one day you will. Yeah. So along with thanking Him for whatever He's doing, you can't stop there with thinking. You've got to go on in and begin to worship and honor him for who he is. Everybody say, he is everything. He is. Amen. There's not a thing in your life. Many people have been so, so, so short on who God is. There's nothing in the world that God cannot do. There's some things he chooses not to do, but there's nothing that he cannot do. He's mighty and he's powerful, and then we wait. And that's, that's the part that usually loses people in prayer, is the waiting in the presence of the Lord. Now, we don't mind waiting on a doctor if we're sniffling out our nose, you know. I mean, we'll go in the waiting room and wait first, then they carry you into the next room, and you wait there again. And then he comes in and sees, he said, I'll be back in five minutes, and then 30 minutes later, you're saying, no, I'm still waiting. 
You understand? So we must learn to wait in the presence of God. You worship your way into his presence. And once you're in his presence, you wait. He's in the control seat. There's certain things that he wants to develop in your life. There's certain things that he wants to work. And the process is waiting in his presence. Because so many people see waiting as wasting. Waiting in the presence of God is healing. It's deliverance. It's help. It's strength. You may get them and say, you know, I'm a little disappointed in my prayer life this morning. I, I worship my way in the presence of God, and, and I was just I sat there in the presence of God for 30 minutes. What happened? You could ask every cell of your body what happened. Because there's not a part of you that wasn't invigorated and empowered by sitting in the presence of God. Because in the presence of God is the fullness, the Bible says, of joy or the fullness of everything. Everything that you will ever, ever need is in the presence of the Lord. So it's the fullness of it. So a lot of your days is going to consist of two things. Is worshiping your being thankful. Everybody say being thankful. <laughs> Heard one person say, if you go in the presence of God and come out and you're not changed, you didn't have a prayer session, you just had a complaining session. That's really right. You don't complain when you go in the presence of the Lord. He is the solution. And because he is the solution, you don't have to complain to him about anything. He knows what's happening in your life. And he knows it far more than we could even know it ourselves. So we, pr- we praise our, or be thankful. We're thankful. We're thankful. Somebody says, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Well, you got up, you got, eye, you got eyes, you got an ear, you got a, got a nose. Are you breathing today? I mean, you got something to be thankful for. You could run through. Uh, I mean, there's things happening. There's things you're, you're alive, so be thankful. Everybody say, be thankful. And then I began to recognize the awesomeness of him. Now, to recognize the awesomeness of him or to honor the Lord, you do have to do a little, little Bible study, or you have to learn some things about God. And one of the greatest ways is to, I believe at this point, is to learn about God is to learn the names of God. There's over a hundred names in the Bible of your father. There's approximately that many names about your, the son, Jesus. And there's also approximately probably that many names about the Holy Spirit. I mean, God is awesome. And God is big. And God is awesome. God is big. And what his name is, is it reveals the character. And in Hebrew language, the name denotes quality. I mean, I mean, you would, you would not take a sourpuss and call him a praiser. You understand? Because the name denotes a quality. Amen. So every time that you learn a name of God, you've learned a depth of God's quality. Amen. Somebody says, I wonder if God will heal me. I can tell you right away, there's one person that does not know how to honor God. Because, see, God's name is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Yahweh Rohi is really. Yah- Jehovah Rapha. It is healer. Amen. God's name is healer. Amen. He has nothing in him but healing. Amen. You understand? Amen. So the process of, of it is not, will God do it? The process of it, will I get myself into a position to receive it from the Lord? And that's what the presence of God is helping do. There's a lot of times where I'm asking God to carry me is further than I am. And only sitting in the presence of God will God be able to change me into that person that will eventually be able to receive where I want him to carry me. So I must be willing to wait. Everybody say wait. Wait, wait in the presence of the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean wasting. It's kind of like the little lady that was pouring the ointment on Jesus. And the disciple said, what waste? And she said, there's no waste. That what this lady has done is so honorable, I'm going to have it read for the rest of time. Praise God. Amen. So honorable. So it's not wasting. It's waiting in the presence of the Lord. Amen. One of the greatest things God wants me to teach me about the Holy Spirit, I can pray from a higher level. Everybody say, I can learn to pray from a higher level. 
Now, do you know that the things that are promised you in the Bible, they're promised you out of a heavenly seat. Do you understand that? They're promised you out of a heavenly seat. Let's look at the scripture too on that. All right, Ephesians chapter 2, 6. And God hath raised us, well, it was there. And God hath raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen? It's, it's a doorway to heaven God's offered me. Uh, now, where do you, where does the Bible tell you to come to the very throne of grace? grace? And you may receive what? Help and mercy. If you don't want your prayer life to take on some type of exciting mode that can radically change your life, then don't listen to this. But if you want your life to radically take on a mode in God, in the presence of the Lord, where God can do wonderful, fantastic, powerful things with us in our lives, then I've got to understand God's calling me up higher. Amen? Amen. So we, we enter, we honor, we wait, and then we experience. All right, now, Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness. Everybody say the fullness of God. Sometimes his presence may just feel like prayer. Sometimes it may feel like repentance. Sometimes it may ask, feel like I'm asking for help. But then sometimes the presence of God is just so much more. What is God's greater glory? The greater glory of God is God's manifest glory. It's when God makes himself known to me in, a, in physical ways that I can detect. Either I can begin to sense God, I can begin to hear God, or I can begin to see things in the Lord. Now, I believe God wants every prayer life here to move into that supernatural area. So where every prayer life begins to, begins to move into a supernatural area to where God's greater glory begins to be manifested. Amen? All right, so we enter, we honor, we wait, and then we experience. And that's what we, we experience an encounter with God. We experience God coming through, breaking through our flesh, Helping us understand. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 said, Shouldn't we expect a far greater glory? Somebody said, I should expect a far greater glory in the midst of my prayer life. I'm, I should expect a greater glory of God in His presence. Amen. And so as we do, we find out, as we begin to experience God, why it is I'm, I, I'm thankful on my way in. I begin to worship the Lord. And then as I began to worship God, I began to wait in his presence. As I began to wait in his presence, now sometimes that waiting may be just like God bringing scriptures to you, or you praying the Lord's Prayer, or it may be uh, praying the 23rd Psalm, or it may be praying even Ephesians 6 out of the armor of God. But somewhere in there, it must take on, we must press until it began to take on a supernatural form. To where the presence of God becomes obvious to us. See, God's glory, God's greater glory is the manifestation of the God in heaven breaking through into the realm of the natural where we are. Now, during this encounter that we have, we can encounter that the word is alive. Everybody say the word is alive. If the word of God is dull to you, that's because you're not allowing the presence of God to make that word alive in you. I tell you what, the Word of God is one of the most exciting things that you could be involved with in the presence of God. Now, you take the, presence of, you take the Word of God out of the presence. That's why when you, when you even read the Word, it needs to start through a progression of moving into the presence of God. When you even go to read the Word, start off with thanksgiving. Just say, Lord, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful, and I just appreciate you so much. And I worship you, Lord, for who you are. I'm just so thankful. And then you allow any surrender that God need, needs to bring up in your life. And, and then it begins to move into this supernatural element. And how many have noticed that if you would read the word in the presence of God, all of a sudden that dull word begins to live? If you can't find a promise, honey, the promise is not the problem. You're the problem. It's taking time to, to worship your way into the presence of God. To where that word begins to come alive and begin to speak into your situation and begin to speak into your circumstances. I am so thankful in the dilemmas I've had in life. God has been so faithful in every dilemma I've faced in life. God has been faithful. If I would spend time in his presence, he would give me a promise that was the power to bring me out of that and over that for the glory of God. So everybody say, the word comes alive in the presence of the Lord. 
In fact, there's, there's at least three parts that become changed in the presence of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is able to change the way I think. Everybody say, I must begin to think in accordance with the Word. There's a miraculous transform, transformation that takes place as you begin to read or study the Word in the presence of God. There's a miraculous transformation. God, by His Spirit, everybody say, by His Spirit, begins to change your life or change us in to that word that I'm reading. The Bible calls it transformation of my mind. God's able to change the way I think. Some people are so hung up and so stubborn, and they're so proud of it. I'm going to tell you, if you're stubborn in the way you live, then you're never going to have a greater presence of God. Everybody say, I'm willing to change everything, and I'm willing to change everything to be closer to God. Come on, say that with me out loud. Some of you, I'm willing to change everything. I'm willing to change my, I'm willing to change anything to have a greater presence of the Lord in my life. And if you don't hunger for that, honey, I don't understand it. Because from the time that I came from God, there, there became this hunger in me. There's been times I will follow it and times I rebel against it, but there's never been a moment when that hunger wasn't there. There was a hunger for more of God. If you're a saved believer today, that same hunger is inside you. Now, you may have capsuled it, and you may have folded it up, and you may have covered it over, but it's time to uncover that which the devil has tried to cover in your life and, and allow the desire for God to burst forth in your life for the glory of God. Amen. So God's able to change me. There's two things that's important in the presence of the Lord. I acknowledge and I receive. Once I'm in the presence of the Lord in my prayer life, there's, there's two things important that I acknowledge. Because acknowledgement brings all the rights. See, heaven is full of everything that the cross has won. Earth is full of everything that the cross hasn't won. So when you worship your way into heaven, you become, you become in a position where you're surrounded by everything that the cross has won. That's why I said, then it becomes an easy answer because, see, the cross has already won our healing. Cross has already won our forgiveness. See, the cross, the things, heaven is surrounded by the things that the cross has won. Then I naturally have one job there. Lord, teach me to receive. Lord, teach me to receive. Now, some children that's born to real wealthy parents, on the day they're born, they start a trust on behalf of that child. Well, my trust was started, but it was, had to be a spiritual basis trust. But they start a trust. And they keep telling that child, now, now when you get to a certain age, all of this is going to be provided for you. That's exactly the way the trust is built in the kingdom of God. That's exactly the way the Lord, the Lord has placed in your account, on your behalf, everything that you will ever need. Everything you could ever desire. Somebody said, I don't understand why I'm weak. I don't understand it either because in your trust is great, great strength. Amen. Somebody says, I don't understand why I don't have peace of mind. Well, I don't understand it either because in your trust, there's great peace of mind. But well, what it means is that I learn to, as I'm in the presence of God, taking hold to the scripture of the Lord, I'm able to grow. Everybody say, I'm able to grow up. I'm able to grow up. And then as I grow up, I'm able to come to a place to receive. Everybody say, to receive. The full inheritance is already mine. But i got to grow up. Everybody say, grow up. I've got to grow up to receive it. You understand what I'm saying? you got to grow up to receive it. And one of the most precious things that happens in the presence of the Lord is not only encounter, but is intimacy. And one of the most powerful things that happens in intimacy is the ability to listen, the ability to hear God. One of the greatest treasures you'll ever have in your life, be, it will be the greatest treasure, is to develop the ears to hear God. Because see, step number four is experience. First thing I do, I enter into His presence. Then I begin to honor him. 
And then I wait in his presence. And then I begin to experience some things. I could be experience the life of his word. And I begin to experience divine encounters with God. And but what the Lord is doing all through all of that is to bring me to a place of intimacy. See, a place of intimacy is able to hear whispers of the Lord. Because for my life to change, one or two things has to happen. To people that worship their way into the presence of the Lord, sometimes God would just give you a promise and you'll never have to do anything else but just believe that promise. But there are other issues to where we become a co-laborer and a co-worker with God to bring about the miraculous change in our lives. And that takes me hearing the Lord. But the Bible says that his sheep hear him. And the sheep says that, and, and the word of the Lord says in the book of John chapter 10, that not only does she hear him, but we're led out. Everybody say led out. Everybody said, I'm led out of sickness. I'm led out of problems. I'm really led out of family situations. I'm led out by following that voice. That's what it says, John chapter 10. So it's the ability to, Hear God, because hear sheep, hear his voice. And then when I hear him, like it's no question to ask there in John 10, it's like no question to ask. When you hear him, you follow him out. When you hear him, you're going to follow him out. So then the Lord brings in verse 2. And step 5 of the presence of God is my response. And the whole rest of the chapter of Psalms 91 is the response of verse 1. The next thing that happens is I begin to say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. What you hear in secret must be, must be spoken out. Now, God very seldom does he break into the natural and speak in the natural. Out of my encounters with the Lord, I can only remember one time that I heard God physically. There's only one time that I that I can say in my encounters that I heard God physically. Because see, the Lord speaks in here. And that builds the intimacy. That, that's why the intimacy of a bedchamber is mentioned so many times between God and his bride. It's the whispers that you hear. And being able to hear the whispers of God, for those to be effective in your life, they must be declared out, spoken out. That's why the Bible says that you can even speak to a mountain and that mountain will have to obey. Whatever you've heard in the secret place must become the declaration of your faith. So my first response to what I sense in the secret place is, I'm going to change my mouth. I'm going to change my mouth. My first response out of the secret place, I'm going to change my mouth. I'm going to begin to say what I hear in that secret place. I believe the Holy Spirit has touched our life today. I believe that the words that were spoken, I believe God is dealing with us. And for many of us, maybe we need to make some things right with God. Maybe there's some areas of our life that we need to surrender to Him. Maybe there's some things that the Holy Spirit is asking us to come over or come out of. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you and ask God to forgive us? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us to surrender those areas of our life? Can I pray with you and ask God to help us 
to be able to change things through His power, to be able to live differently, talk differently, think differently, and be different. God can help us do that. That's all in the areas of God's strength and His power is to help us live a victorious life. Let's pray. Would you pray and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my failure. And Lord, I ask you to come in my life. And Lord, right here today, I ask you, God, that you would be Lord of my life. And Lord, in the issues of my life that I need to surrender to you, the areas of fear and discouragement, the things that's caused me to be depressed and those things that's hit hard on me or those things that's tried to come into my life and overcome my life, Lord, I come today to surrender them to you. I know that you're able, God, to free me, to help me. And Lord, I surrender them in Jesus' name to you. And now, Lord, I ask you for your grace and for your strength to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call that number on the bottom of the screen. Will you call us and let us hear from you? Will you let us be a part of your support team? Let us be a part of that team that's going to be praying with you and standing with you and believing God with you. And also on the website, let us help you pray with God bless you, and I pray that this week will be the strongest week in the Lord you've ever had. Look forward to it next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abrams. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you, and thank you for watching the program today. We're excited to introduce the all-new Victory Church app, now available on the Apple App Store and the Android market for your smartphone and tablet. Get church information and download free content from Victory. Don't miss a service. Listen to past week's messages on the go, new after each service in the Camden and El Dorado campuses. Access Victory TV on demand and watch all the exciting video series taught by Pastor Jerry and the Victory Pastoral Team. Send a confidential prayer request and let the Victory Prayer Ministers believe God with you for your miracle and take advantage of our most convenient way to give with a secure victory giving section where you can choose from many easy ways to give your tithes or sow into specific ministries of the church at your convenience right from the palm of your hand it's all at your fingertips on the new victory church app download for free today simply go to the apple app store or the android marketplace right on your smartphone or tablet and search for the victory church arkansas and click on the victory logo